we've been asked to do a Viper Prime demo. So uh, this is the fourth iteration of Viper technology. And I'll just uh, walk you through it. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but the idea here is that instead of using the classic uh, GM Sheedy, then KWire and all that, everything's integrated in one system. I'll try to bring you through some of the features. The traditional Viper screw system is here. And what you can see is that you can, by turning the red handle, you can extend this K-wire, which is actually very stiff, so you can really pound on this K-wire, uh, and it eliminates tapping and awling and all that. Um, <laughs> a couple other features of this is that it's relatively short, so it's designed to work either under navigation or AP only, and um, one of the most important features, you know, it's funny, the Chinese copied this screw before it even was released. And, you know, they copied all the obvious features, but actually maybe the most salient and important feature is the tip of the screw. The tip of the screw has a cutting flute, and so you got to be careful. You can cut your hand on it. Also, if you're doing bicortical screws, um, then you got to be careful about having them go through the front of the cortex. So Dr. Good Mason's going to be my assistant here, is starting his fellowship with Dr. Rowe, right? Yeah, yes, congratulations. Sir. Okay. Thank you. And we'll walk you through in like an L3-4 construct. Uh, we'll do it unilaterally just for the sake of time. Uh, so we'll start here with the x-ray guidance. Uh, is it Jerry? Jerry, okay, so let's start with L3, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the uh, AP view. Now, you can do nav, you can do robot, but if you're concerned about radiation and accuracy, then what we're gonna start with is an AP view. So an AP view is, Jerry, you wanna hit that for me? Hit, yeah, so is that L3 or L2? That's probably down here, right? Good, okay, now will you line that up for me, line that upper end plate up for me? So a couple things for you guys who don't do a lot of perk screws, there's a lot of elements of this you can see on the imaging. The first is, what Jerry's gonna do is he's gonna line up the fluoro so the spinous process is in the middle. And this cadaver is a little bit rolled because uh, it's not a real hospital bed. Whoa, okay. <laughs> and uh, let's see L3 there and this, patient has a Bartolotti syndrome or autofusion, right? So L3, so you now need to, to Ferguson and view it a little bit one way or the other just to get that upper end plate lined up. So the upper end plate right now looks like an oval, but we want it to look like a line, like a straight line. Whoa, too much motion. Yeah. So this is really important. Now, what you're seeing right now is Jerry's getting the image acquisition, and um, that's really important. I'll tell you one of the most important things you can get is a good uh, fluoroscopist. So that's not quite right, Jerry, there. I think you overcompensate. It's very subtle. Mm, no, still not. You can see it's like an oval there, right? Yeah. So you're lined up with the lower end plate of L4, looks like. Getting better, a little bit more. Better yet, let's go a little bit more than that. Right there, let's try that. Good, a little bit more. And this is very important because if you're gonna hit small, these are big pedicles. A little bit more, a little bit more. A little, little bit more roll, good. There you go, right there. And so you can see now the upper end plate is pretty much like a line now. Oop. Okay, so now Jerry, the spinous process is not in the center, so you need to roll it one way or the other, just a little bit, tiny hair, a tiny hair roll. There you go, so that's a perfect view. So you got the spinous process in the middle and the upper end plate there. So now, when we're doing our awake T-lift uh, procedure, uh, x-ray right there, so what we'll do is we'll actually inject first with some x -pearl. again, right there. Okay, so that's about the right place. Thank you, Dr. Goodmason. So right, about, right below that, right, it's about here. And what we'll do is we'll actually take the spinal needle and we'll dock it. We'll dock it right on there. Uh, X-ray there. So Mike, the patient's awake at this point in time? Yes, they're awake for all this. Why are we not seeing anything here? X-ray here. Again. Oh, that was the other side of the needle, sorry. X-ray here. Apologize. Okay, let's go up. X-ray again. Sorry about that, guys. Again. Okay, so we'll be about like, uh, like this, okay? So we'll actually put the spinal needle in first. I'm sorry about that. And we'll target, X-ray there. A little too high. Right there, so now I'm on bone, okay? And what I'll do is I will hit the bone and I will inject with x going back. And, and I want to do that first if I'm using x for the awake fusion because I want to get the, the, the drug to diffuse. It's lipophilic, so it won't diffuse like classic lidocaine. Now, if we've done that already, or let's say you choose not to do that, you're doing this under general anesthesia, then we're going to make an incision, and that incision is going to go through the fascia. So again, you're not doing 
a, uh, a, a, a jam sheety needle and all that. So you need to cut through the fascia a little bit to get this. Raise your machine up a little bit, please, Jerry. There you go. Okay, and you can see that the short length of this is useful. X-ray there. Okay. Somehow we lost that perfect image. I don't know why we did, but X-ray again. Yeah, we lost that perfect image again. Okay, so pretty big facet joint, x-ray again. So we're docking at the TP facet junction right here, and that's, it's a pretty big facet. So this looks like a pretty decent starting point for that pedicle. Again, one more x-ray there, okay? So then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna extend, you can see I'm turning this red part here, and if you take a shot there, Jerry, x-ray there, you can see that uh, k wire is coming out the front. And I'm gonna impact that in. Okay, x-ray again, right? So you can see now I've moved in. So it's kind of like you're putting this K-wire into the bone already. Now you can choose how deep you go. For example, the classic AP technique would be putting this in two centimeters. I'm gonna extend this two centimeters. X-ray again there, you can see how long that is, right? And if I don't pass the medial wall, x-ray, of the pedicle, then I'm safe, right? Now re with really hard bone, if you extend it long like that, you may actually bend the, uh, the, the K-wire inside. It's not a big deal, but it's something to consider. And then so what happens now is the tip of the screw is up against the bone, and this is a little bit of a heavy, heavy mallet, but we're gonna impact it so those teeth of the screw engage the bone a little bit. And then we're gonna apply force. You can see I'm pushing as I go, and I'm holding this red part. So as I hold this, X-ray there, the screw is going into the bone, and the K-wire is being pulled backwards. It's being pulled back into the system. Okay, x-ray there. Whoa. X-ray there. Good, and it's getting some bite there now. And Dr. Goodmason, why don't you take a, take a couple turns and see how that feels as you go with that. You feel like you're biting bone there? It does, yes. Yeah, good. And now you can see the K-wire, the markings it's are on locked. the side here. It's all the way back. So x-ray there. And I'll tell you, we tend to shoot a couple more keep going, shots because you don't get to redo this. And Dr. Goodmason's gonna keep going down until it kind of touches the facet and just stop right there, <laughs> right? X-ray there, because you don't have the full lateral view. So then with that, we can keep this here or we can take the uh, device off and we just go like this and undo it. And we can adjust the depth later if we want. Mike, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Let's see so L4 now. If patients are awake, aren't they feeling this part of the case? Because like the facet joints actually have most of the other fibers. Way. Yeah, you know what, they do feel a little bit of it. And so when we do the awake fusion, we are sedating them with some propofol and um, they get a little bit of ketamine too. So they are definitely being sedated for this. Also, when you inject the Expiril, you're, you're combining it with uh, bupivacaine, so the stuff's immediately available, right? So if we take the spinal needle now, so that's L3, but you're absolutely right, Jeff. Um, this is probably the most painful part of the procedure. Okay, so down here, so it's kind of a big patient. Okay, so down here, we're gonna, if we were to inject again, we would be putting again this in, hitting the bone like that, and then injecting on the way out, okay? So we're gonna incise here again. So are you, are you injecting right on the facet joint or on the TP? I'm injecting onto wherever the bone surface is, and I wanna to inject the periosteum, and then the track coming out. Got it. X-ray, yeah, okay, again. Again, so very subtle movements on this cadaver. And big facets, again, so that's about as medial as I can get, x-ray. Okay, that's about as medial as I can get on this. And I'm gonna extend this, I'm not gonna go two centimeters this time, but I'm just gonna kinda anchor it like this, x-ray. Like this. And I'm gonna have Dr. Goodmason come in, x-ray again, okay? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna whack this a little bit harder to get it seated. You're a big guy, so be careful. <laughs> and get it seated onto the bone and feel those teeth really bite. There you go, that's good, that felt good. And then advance as you apply pressure. So he's gonna advance. And this is amazing, okay, and check it. Move your hand Shall out of the way, like this, yeah. You don't wanna fry your hand. And see, you can move a little, you can aim a little more towards the head. So because it's, it's so aggressive, what happens is it has two features that are really special here. One is you can actually adjust the direction of your screw. Check it again. Out there. Good, uh-huh. Maybe a little more towards the head, right, yeah. And the second thing is it has a self-centering ability. The, 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 uh, and I can show you slides of this, that it actually allows you to almost self-center, perfect, perfect, uh, the, uh, the screw. Again, one more time. Okay, let's go to lateral now. 
So you can see that if you're, if you're just working through this, that it's extremely efficient. It's a very, very fast process. Uh, you skip a lot of steps. Um, you probably get re less radiation too in general, although I tend to be a little meticulous about getting the shots just right. So now we're ready here, and we're just gonna check the, the height of our screws to make sure everything is good after all the screws are in, and then we're gonna pass our rods. A um, Couple other aspects, if you're doing very long constructs like a spinal deformity case, probably don't wanna, this is probably oversunk here, huh? So let's take the screwdriver um, and back this out. Normally I wouldn't back screws out, we would leave them a little proud first. Let's see. And one of the other features of this is that the, um, the screwdriver's all universal. Let's see, do we have, let's maybe I'll put this back in. Do uh, you have a quick grab for, yeah, there you go, thank you. Um, all of the screwdrivers are the same, so there's not different kinds of heads and, and, uh, and sizes. Again, yeah, I'll probably like that, and then this one's gonna go a little. Mike, when you're doing a T-lift, do you do this Again? before or after the cage? So it depends on what we're doing. And my, my workflow has generally been, you have a 50 rod, uh, has been to do this uh, last. So when we do the awake fusions, we do the access, the decompression, then the cage, and we put the screws in last. It's a workflow thing, you know, because, you know, the equipment doesn't have to come screws first and then screws back and screws again, you know what I mean? So then when we put our rod in, does that make sense, Jeff? Yes. So when I'm passing these rods on an awake fusion, x-ray there, I want to make sure that the rod the tip of the rod is deep. In other words, I can take the rod and go like this, x-ray, and I'm, sorry, uh, razor machine just a touch, yeah, x-ray there again, and you can see I'm pushing down on it, but there's meat or muscle between me and the screw heads. So that's a classic situation. People go, well, I had an MIST lift, and the patient had a lot of pain, and you just basically smooshed all the muscle and created compartment syndrome. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna take my rod here, x-ray again, and you can see that the tip is all the way down by the saddle, the screw. And then I'm gonna make my turn, and then I'll, I'll be in. Let's see if the rod's the right length here. X-ray? Yeah, that's the right length. And then I, I can check that it's in by looking. I can try to spin the rod, head, the, the, the screw head, and, and I'll know that I'm in, right? Very straightforward. And in a real patient, you don't cut as much, right? So what's gonna happen is this is gonna force our rod. I'm gonna take an X-ray here. It forces it like that. So what you do is you take your first set screw, come up here, Dr. Good Mason, and you're gonna take this screw and you're gonna, the set screw, and you're gonna karate chop it down. Karate chop it down, and this is gonna go like, whoop, like that. Mm -hmm. And what that does, X-ray, is it makes sure that your, your, your set screw is, uh, is pushing the rod back, that is caudally, and then your rod will be the perfect length, right? Because the last thing you want, go ahead, last thing you wanna do is tighten your rod down and find out your rod's too short at the base end, which is the handle end, right? So this really is a good way. Just start with this first set screw here, and that will seat your rod as against the most caudal aspect if you're passing a rod north, or you, know, you can reverse that, of course, right? And then uh, you've got the other uh, set screw? Yeah, good. Yep. And very, very straightforward. Now, no, of course, we're, we're almost never doing unilateral screws. We're always doing bilateral. We're just doing this for the sake of speed. You can see the markings here allow you to identify when your set screws are final uh, positioned into the proper uh, location, right? Very straightforward, very simple. Again, just in an effort to try to make uh, efficiency and workflow a lot more uh, straightforward. So go ahead and final tighten there. Go ahead, Dr. Good Mason. And so he's getting a little windshield wiper here, right? So you, it's, it's rolling the rod a little bit. There you go. Is there, are you not set right for this? I think it's torqued. You think it's torqued? Okay, how about yeah. that? <laughs> You're strong enough to know if it's torqued, right? 700. Easy, Ryan, easy. <laughs> I wish I had fellows like this. We had a fellow once, and I'm not gonna name who it was, who couldn't put in screws until we had power available. <laughs> and then he was a master. It was an Asian guy, of course. Okay, great. And then we're just going to undo this, and then you're going to, exactly, go like that, right, pull it back, it pulled back like this. Good. Yeah, you're out, you're out. <laughs> so, so it's, if you look at the way these, yeah, good, like this, if it, the, way, the way it's seated, you got to, so sometimes it's, oh, there we go. Okay. So it's seated in like that, so you got to pull it back in the other direction. And then we're going to break the tabs. You know how yeah. to break the tabs, Dr. Good Mason? Uh, yeah, do you have a tab breaker? No. No, no, with your hands, with your hands. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> roll the cadaver off the table. There you go. 
Good. And always check your tabs, by the way. Check their lengths. These almost never break at the wrong area, but it's possible for them to break at the wrong area, and then you'll have a shard of metal. So just have your back uh, table people take a look and make sure they're all the same length. And that's pretty much it. Very straightforward, very simple. Uh, any questions? Really nice work. Excellent job. That was like, well, like 15 minutes or so? <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the awake fusion with four screws in a cage and endoscopic takes 55 minutes on average. Two levels takes about an hour and a half. Three levels takes two hours. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a lot of its workflow. Any questions? Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on um, guide wires versus no guide wires? Are you like totally guide wire free now? No, no, I love guide wires. Um, I'm not one of those people who's afraid of guide wires. I tell the fellows they're going through the front all the time. Never hurts anybody, but um, of course, theoretically, it could, right? So guide wires, uh, some people hate them, right? They're terrified of them. They're safe wire. There's other systems for that. But I'll tell you, when you do a very complex case, let's say we're doing a T9 to pelvis perk, um, you need to have guide wires because there's too much metal crowding. So you need to get all your stuff targeted and then you put your screws in. Because if you start putting your screws in, you have lordosis, you can't see anything anymore. It's just screw heads and extensions everywhere. So for the complex cases, we still use guide wires for sure. And then you, you had a nice little um, pearl regarding the tip of the, the rod, making sure that's seated deep enough, you know? Do you, for like multi-level cases, do you have any other pearls for, uh, to make sure that the, the rod is subfascial versus superfascial? Yeah, that's a great question um, and a great point. And we struggle sometimes. So if you look at the way these uh, rod screw systems are, they're all a little bit different. And um, if, you, if you assemble this system, right, and you know, let's just put it together right now. So the longer this rod gets, okay, the longer the rod gets, the more of an issue this becomes. And the more lordosis you have, actually, the harder this gets. It's really hard to pass a highly lordotic rod sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's real easy, just goes through, but it can be very, very difficult. So sometimes what you'll have to do is you'll have to nick the fascia on the back end, on the heel end of this rod, because you need to get, you need to get the turn, right? So if it's, if you can't get that turn, the deeper the patient is, the harder it is, right? So the deeper the patient, the longer the rod, and the more intense the lordotic curvature gets, the harder it is to get down deep. Um, it's, it's tough. And then the other tip is that when you're trying to go right and left, medial lateral, the way you do that is you don't turn, your, you don't turn it like this. What you do is you go like this. So if you're going to go medial, like going that, that way, right, going in this direction, you're going to turn your handle this way. So when you see us passing a rod through a long construct, let's say T10 to pelvis, we're not going like this. There's no way to do that because with each uh, screw you go through, this stiffer, it gets stiffer because it's going through those. So what you do is you snake it through like this and like this and like this and like this, like endovascular surgery. And that's the way you, you move uh, medial lateral. Great. Any other questions? Oh, we got a question back there from Malok. Mike, can you hear? <laughs> Hi. Okay, um, so Mike, your, your workflow is you do the... You do the interbody work first, then the cage? Yes. It's, uh, oh, sorry, so inter interbody, cage, then screws. Right. So what do you do when there's a flat disc? So getting access, let's say the disc is flat and you want to do an interbody fusion. How hard is it for you to um, get in? Because you, if you do the screws first, then interbody, you can distract across the screw sometimes. Well, that's a great segue into Larry Koo next because... Uh, you know, we rely heavily on the cage technology. We release with the endoscope, and the cage has to do most of that work. So that's right. We're not distracting off our screws okay. um, to get in. I know that that's commonly done with, uh, say, invasive users, but we're relying on cage technology to get the inner body height. Okay. Great. Any other questions? All right, Mike. Thank you so much. Thanks. That was an excellent you, demonstration. Let's yeah. give him a round thank of you. applause. Okay.